Welcome to Shipwright. Look at the famous bartender right here. <laughs> but we're excited. We're in Lunenburg. We're here for Chit Chat Shop, and we are here at Shipwright Brewing Company with Adam and Kelly. Come on over, Adam. Yeah, you gonna jump over? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say you're just gonna stand there. That's okay. I thought, I'm like, okay. What kind? What, what, I thought you're gonna. I thought you're gonna serve me. Yeah. That's a big fan. Dukes the hazard. I don't know how that works. <laughs> Slide across the bar. Cool. Well, thanks for having us. Oh, it's great to have you guys here. We love going on the road, and uh, I gotta tell you, this is a a compact but mm -hmm. awesome little space. Yeah. Yeah, we, we make a lot happen in this small space. I for bet sure. you do. Yeah. So tell me the story. How did it start? Because you, you're a man of many businesses. This yeah. is just one of them. I, I was born and grew up in Lunenburg, and I uh, bought the Grand Banker five years ago. I grew up working here as a teenager. and uh, Loved it so much. Yeah, and I wanted to, <laughs> exactly, right? I started busting tables here and never wanted to leave. No, I did leave for about 10 years. Okay. Went out west, worked for Fairmont, worked Delta Hotels in Halifax. Yep. Got the call to come back home, had a chance to buy this place. And always had a passion for craft beer. Um, yeah. I uh, changed all the taps over down there. I put all local craft beers, rotating taps. Yeah. Tried to have the best selection on, on the South Shore for sure. One yeah. of the best in the province, I think. And uh, wanted to be the first to have a craft brewery in Lunenburg. There were none here yet, surprisingly. There had been a few attempts that didn't go through. Okay. And I saw an opportunity to jump on it and had some space in this building upstairs. We have an inn, a restaurant, and a brewery all under one roof. And two uh, young children. Yeah, two young girls. Nothing like just piling it on. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> all at once. All at once. All at once. So yeah, at the end of last year, we uh, we opened the doors here. It was in the works for about a year. Wow. But it was small space, but it was a lot to make it happen. Putting the brewery on the second floor of a hundred some year old house, which <laughs> I is can what only it first imagine. was. <laughs> So you retail here, mm -hmm. cans and growlers, yep. and uh, you, you have it on tap at the grill, at the Grand Banker. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And is there future plans? What are the future plans for the brand? Yeah, so uh, we have a building across town that uh, Lunenburg is affectionately known as the Fishnet. It was a diner when I was a kid, 70s and 80s. Okay. And uh, I bought that before we started this, knowing that there needed to be a growth strategy in yeah. this small space. Yeah. Good so planning. So right now, that's where we keep all our grain, our kegs, all our supplies. We bring it down here on brew days. And uh, we use that space now for storage, but that okay. is going to be our bigger brewery eventually. eventually That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I can't wait. So, we, we if you, Adam will do a little uh, around the space here. There, there's no kitchen here. So, we decided <laughs> to do some road snacks, which is awesome. It's tight and compact, but I love it. It's so well laid out. Um, so, I thought, you know, what goes, what goes well with beer? Bar snacks. And one of mm -hmm. the things I like at the bar is, is a great little dip. So we have a French onion dip that we do in house, uh, but and it's great because you can add beer to it. Nice. And that's what we're going to do today. And we've got some yummy chips from Kitchen Door that we're going to put up with it and uh, go from there. Perfect. All right. So this is really high tech here, Patty and the cream cheese. So we've got cream cheese going on in here, and it's just softened, right? And then so we talked about what beer would you like to put in this one? Because you've got right now you've got three beers on tap, right? Exactly. Yeah. We've only had as many as four, so you're <laughs> you're doing good getting three today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and which one would you like? So t tell us a little bit about all of them. Yeah, so the Cutwater Kolsch is our German lager ale. Okay. Uh, we're in a German town. We wanted something nice, clean, easy drinking, approachable. Yeah. That's our go-to. That's We always try to keep that on the board. Okay. Uh, and then we have the two other tanks have something different every time. Yeah. We're, we're rolling through the styles. And this would be my favorite, that's, I think. That, yeah, that's, <laughs> that we just we just kegged that about a half an hour ago, the first keg. Wow. That's our Belgian IPA, very hop, hop forward. Uh, then we have a sidewalk saison. We're working with the Belgian East Strain right now, so you're okay. gonna see, we have a lot of Belgians coming out. Awesome. But I, I think for your dip, the the cold water okay. will work. Okay. So really we just well. need a little bit. Can you get me a little bit? Yeah. Awesome. Put five there. ounces. Yeah. Oh, not even that. Like just three to four ounces right. is probably Let's fine. See. Let's see the pro. Let's see the pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is a pro. Look at that. <laughs> that would not be me. <laughs> There we go. Perfect. Awesome. Do I get a sampler? No. I'm yeah, kidding. No, sure. Maybe later. <laughs> so we're just going to add that right in. Uh, and again, it's really your preference about what you like, uh, whether you like something like a dark or a stout or depends on the flavor that you like. I f Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Patty's decorating herself. <laughs> um, it really depends on, uh, you know, the flavor profile you like. Hoppy would work in this, but mm -hmm. I this, I'll smell that. You're getting it already. Oh, yeah. Woohoo. All right, so that's our cream cheese. And if I was in a commercial kitchen, I would put this in like a mixer, like a KitchenAid or a blender. 
to get the lumps out, but I'm not doing such a bad job here. You're putting right on my face? You're not going to go in the bowl here? <laughs> oh, I know. You're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was waiting for when you get Adam's hands dirty over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so cream cheese. We've got a little mayo here we're going to add in. And one of the things I did last night, we got mayo and a little bit of sour cream. You don't need all that sour cream, a couple tablespoons. Um, is I caramelized some onions. So, because I knew we didn't have a place to cook them here. But, no. And the great thing about this is if you're making onions at home, so I just sliced them up, a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of canola oil, whatever you have, and then I deglazed with a little bit of beer. Nice. So that's another way to get beer flavor in. So we're just going to add those in. And I use Vidalia onions because they're quite sweet and they work well. All right. Let's see if Patty can mix this up <laughs> without getting it all over her. All right. And while you want it, you, you see mix if you can up. make that all happen. Right. And I will season it up. So we've got salt and pepper. And I like to go heavy on the pepper. And then we've got a little bit of lemon here that's going to just help brighten it a little bit. I find with um, dips that have dairy in them, uh, you need a little bit of acidity and brightness. So... And then we'll add a little bit of salt. And look at that. That's it? That's it. Road snacks with Patty. <laughs> Patty and Adam. Yeah, We're pros. Totally right. <laughs> so, Graham Banker, is there a dip of choice? Or is there any dips? You must For have. sure. Yeah. yeah, there is. There's one. You don't have to keep staring. Uh, it's okay. okay. You're just getting a little tired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, there's uh, the Popeye's spinach and crab dip. That's uh, Parmesan spinach and crab dip. It's been on the menu since the place opened in 96. It's funny, when I bought the place, I was told by the locals, I hope you're not taking the Acadian stew off the menu, the Popeye's dip, you better keep that. Like, okay. I was pretty much told which ones to keep. I already knew, but they made sure I knew. Yeah, but that's been awesome. on there for a while. It's, it's uh, crab, Parmesan, spinach, cream cheese. Sounds delicious. And yeah. Chef, secret to an amazing dip. Does every amazing dip have to have cream cheese in it? No, no, we do. We've done a lot of dips without cream cheese. Like we do a great one. It's almost, it's a take on a green goddess dressing. So we do the same thing. Uh, a little bit of oil. Uh, it's, it's delicious. Buzz up some herbs. The other thing is you, from a dip perspective, you don't always need, um, like you said, dairy, like think of like chimichurris, think of like salsa verdes, all of those work really, really well. And you mm -hmm. can spread those on, on any sort of, you know, grilled crostini or anything like that. Although I'm, I'm pretty, I like dairy dips. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cheese and dairy, I mean, can't go wrong with that. And beer. Yeah, and beer, exactly. <laughs> it all works well together. All right, so we're going to head on a little tour. And I buy little, I mean little, because it is a little compact <laughs> space, but it's great. We're going to see what's, uh, what's happening today at Shipwright. All right, so here we are, just down at the other end of the bar. Patty's going to stand here because she got her shirt <laughs> full <laughs> of dip. Yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Oh, and we've arrived. <laughs> and here we are with Matt. What, am I, what can I call you? Master Brewer? Master ah, Brewer? I guess maker? There's, What's there's, the, there's like all kinds of names. There's Master Brewer, what Brew do you Master, like? Brewmaster. Brewmaster. Brew yeah, that's, that's the easiest. That's the easiest. Season, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, Brewmaster Kelly. We're very excited. And today is a kegan day, I hear. It's Well, it's a bit of an everything day. Okay. Um, I'm starting with some kegging okay. and cleaning some tanks. And eventually, once I get all this stuff out of the way, we're going to start some brewing. That's so, awesome. Because their space is so small, it's kind of, I can't, I can't multitask too hard because mm -hmm. there just isn't the space to do it. But so it's one stage after another. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's totally fine. The customers get to come in and they get to see Ch things, yeah. things start <laughs> from like the very beginning to the very end. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's involved in kegging? Well, it's kind of, to be honest, it's like the easiest day. Uh, <laughs> well, good, I can't the easiest day. It's, it's usually the day when I'm like also doing admin stuff because I can just be kind of watching it. It's filling up, just paperwork. Um, so what happens is by the time it gets to this tank, which yeah. is called our bright tank, um, this is where basically beer that has fermented and conditioned will go and it will get carbonated and then it will get kegged out. So this is like very end of the line. So how long process. is the process? It depends on the beer style. Um, anywhere is upwards of like three and a half weeks. That's okay. like okay. For, for say like for our Kolsch, that's usually the range it kind of fits in. Okay. Um, some of the other ale styles though, they're more in the like two to three weeks. 
it's okay. phase. So, so three-ish yeah. weeks, give three or take. Weeks. Yeah, give or okay. take. Awesome. Beer's kind of on its own schedule. You just kind of be like, okay, when are you ready to go? And it'll it'll let you know. It'll tell you. So, yeah, okay. it'll tell you. So yeah, I like that. It's confident beer. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So what's the process? Can you keg now? Or no? Um, I'm cut, it, no, I'm actually, I have one hooked up here. I just oh. kind of stopped it for a second. Oh, second I see, okay. Because it's, uh, it's, it also kind of makes a bit of a, a hissing noise because it's letting out CO2 at the same time. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, it's super, super simple. Um, luckily, there's tools made in the industry that make our life easy. So, you know, we don't have to work super hard. There's other parts of the process <laughs> that are hard enough. Um... But yeah, it's basically just like a reverse tool for, it, beer goes in the same way that you take it out, like for draft and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's just a tool that basically does it in a reverse Universal. manner to fill it up. So, so yeah. how much in this, how many of these will yield from a tank? That generally? also is like a bit style dependent, but we usually get anywhere from like 10 to 13 kegs. Oh, okay. Yeah, out of a tank. Which and I gotta say, I love these kegs. Did you see these kegs? They're awesome. They're pretty nifty, for sure. Oh, cool. So what's your favorite style to brew? You know, that's become a harder question to answer <laughs> since working here. That's probably like the most uh, like creative leash I've had. That's um, awesome. Like, well I, like, I love brewing the Kolsch because it's something we have all the time and um, Styles like that and other lo lager styles are definitely a passion of mine for sure. And it's great to have those beer styles that you get to like dial something in mm -hmm. and like just work on perfecting that particular style and like making it the best that you possibly can and just being super happy with it. So they're tough styles to get right because they're not, there's not a lot to hide behind. It's not like big IPAs or dark yeah. beers, it's like light stuff and you gotta, you just get, you gotta do it right, and you gotta like give it the time and figure out what it wants. Um, but in the same breath, like we've done, I don't know, maybe twenty between twenty five and thirty other different seasonals since we've oh, started. Wow. That's a lot. So <laughs> yeah, we've been all over the map with like milk stouts, porters, all kinds of varieties of IPAs with different hops, hop varietals. Um, now we're into the Belgian stuff, so it's we kind of just we like to keep it fresh and awesome. as Adam said, like we, we do have future down the road to have our bigger facility. So this is kind of good testing grounds to figure out, you know, what the locals like, what we like. So when we get over there, we'll have a really good idea of like what kind of stuff maybe yeah. some recipes we'll want to take and ramp up and bring to bigger production. Um, just from the feedback that we're yeah. getting directly now. It's great to have like a little incubator like this, right? Where you take yeah. all that feedback totally. and you totally yeah. get to test. Absolutely. There's been like some, with, there's been a couple we've brought back the second time okay. just because they were like in the street with their pitchforks. Like, <laughs> do this, bring it back. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I'm getting the message. I'm getting the message. <laughs> Uh, so the, we've we've got like a pretty good short list already, I think, of what we're gonna do once we get over there when we get first started. Other than Kolsch, yes. Um, but yeah, it's great to have that direct feedback. This is the first brewery I've worked in where it's almost like an open kitchen concept. Like I you're love it. you're right there with your customers. You're having every conversation with everybody that walks through that front door. Yeah. And most of the time, I'm just shoved back in a production room, like doing doing what I do and putting my head down and getting it done. Um, so it's a little bit of a different different uh, work environment for sure, yeah. but it's it's a good one because I get to have some good conversations with people and yep. see what they're looking for and get direct feedback of what they're drinking. And yeah. It yeah, has its awesome. perks, it has its drawbacks too. Our first kitchen was an open kitchen and they used to say uh, the chefs were right there and they'd be working, right? And, and I, at the beginning, we didn't have anybody to tend to. So, you know, customer came in, you had mm -hmm. to wash your hands up and head on over. And you can imagine the chefs that are like knee deep in whatever they're doing are like, I'm like, no, you have to be really nice to the customer. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Kitchen Door, you know. And they're like, Rrr. it was quite it was a hard sell. <laughs> so it has its perks, it depends. Yeah. It all, yeah, yeah, some customers are like, oh, I don't know if I want to go back there. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you want to be a master brewer? Yeah. Uh, it, that's, I don't really know uh, where it completely started. Um, I've always been into food. 
Okay. Um, that was like, if I wasn't doing this, I probably would have went the culinary route. Um, but I, I do remember when I was a, a young teen, or I guess a young adult, uh, my mom's a salesperson and okay. she traveled a lot and she, wherever she went, she always brought back a lot of craft beers. And at the time that wasn't a lot, cause that was like, even for Atlanta, Canada, 15, you know, ish yeah, years ago, no, you're right. that wasn't, there wasn't a ton of selection, but there was some. Um, so she kind of got me started a little bit. So I, I blame her now. And she <laughs> takes full ownership of it. She loves, she loves it. Uh, but uh, I kind of started exploring some different, different beers uh, that way. Um, I did work out west for a little while as well uh, in the sales side okay. of the liquor industry. And I just, I just found it wasn't hands-on enough, and I wanted I wanted to get knee deep in in understanding like the process and styles and like just how it was made. That's awesome. And I was lucky enough to um, get into the Niagara College program, uh, the Brewmaster Brewery Operations. In their it was only their second year, I think, of the okay. program even existing back in 2011. And I was the only Atlantic Canadian there. It was awesome. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. I was just like, how did this happen? <laughs> how did I get here? That's uh, the best though. Yeah. And I uh, did that for two years and met some great people and have a ton of great colleagues still from mostly in Ontario, but some other areas as well. Uh, some other students got in from Western Canada and we'll say the Northern states. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just snowballed from there. Yeah. Uh, I was at Garrison, still at Garrison. I was at Spindrift for a while, worked at uh, Bose and Oast House when I was in Ontario. And uh, luckily, over over the years, I kind of knew Adam. Once he bought the <laughs> Grand Banker, he definitely like had his interest in craft beer. And I knew, you know, probably like expanding the the restaurant with the craft beer offerings yeah. it wasn't going to be enough for him. It was a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> He's a serial yeah, entrepreneur, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> so there was like whisperings over the years that that you know he would uh, maybe want to start a craft brewery, and eventually got the phone call. I think it was like a little over. It was like a year and a bit ago that uh, we sat down at Battery Park and okay. had our first meeting. over beer. Yeah. yeah, and he was like, "Do you want to come home?" And I was like, that's kind of been the goal all along was eventually to find myself back where I grew up, making beer for the locals. So like, I love that's, it. That's a dream what job, a great right? story. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun and super rewarding. And yeah, I, like, I, can, I can't imagine myself. Do you have big plans when the, the new space opens up about <sighs> all sorts of cool things? Yeah, you know, I try not to get ahead of myself too much. I try to just like chew off a little bit at a time and yeah. then just kind of like let it see where it takes us and, you know, have some set plans, but also like not put ourselves in a box either. We definitely haven't here and it's worked out really well for us. And yeah, I think we keep got to keep that part of it going too. The awesome. industry is constantly changing mm. and new stuff. And, you know, you don't want to paint yourself in a corner. You want to try and stay creatively, you know, on top of things. And do R&D and you yeah. know that's that's the fun part you should never lose the fun part so yeah, yeah. well good congratulations thank you what an awesome story yeah. yeah all right we're gonna head over and have some dip now you can join us oh awesome <laughs> <laughs> woo -woo. look at that beautifully plated dip I was fine with the transition I just did from you guys uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look what else we have. Patty's favorite time of day. Laces out. Girl Ooh, dog laces out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Girl -clock is laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so we, we put the dip in uh, in this lovely little ramekin, and we've got some chips. Now, we're kind of known at Kitchen Door for our crispy wonton chips. Have you ever Ooh, had our crispy wonton? No. Oh, well, game changer in the world. I'll give you the secret recipe after. So I'll put some of those on the plate. And we also do, as I'm sure you do in the restaurant, we do um, kettle chips. So we do our own kettle chips, which are also equally as awesome. And I thought these would both go well yeah. with the dip. All right, there we go. All right, cool. Nice. Try it awesome. out. See okay. what you like. <laughs> I'm trying the beer. I was getting accused <gasps> of scooping, but... Uh, that is like maybe my new fate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to try one of those. Oh, wow. That's really good. Yeah. 
That's really good too. <laughs> I might have to take a growler home. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Really oh, good. Not too shabby. Mm. Mm. You want some? I'm good. No. Nope. <laughs> you don't. It's true. <laughs> you got a burger once. I did. You did. Changed my life. Cool. So I asked her, what else is going on? Like the Grand Bank or ship, right? Like just. Just the man is busy. Right? Like, don't put any more pressure on him. Yeah. He's up on his plate, <laughs> for God's sake. What's Every time I hear Adam doing something new, I'm like, what? How does he manage that? And your kids are like half the age of mine, right? Yeah. Like I, my first daughter was born two weeks after we opened the restaurant and took it over. We hadn't sold our house in Dartmouth. Uh, we were living upstairs in the inn, room to room, which everyone was free, because people booked certain room types. And we had a full restaurant. Everyone wants to see what was new. And uh, so that... After doing that and getting through that, I mean, I have a very... My wife worked in the industry before. Oh, yeah. So she's a teacher. Okay. But it's a bonus. She worked in the industry. She, she gets she what it takes. Understood. I'm not going to say it was, it was neat. That was, that was in uh, her, <laughs> but we got through it. Yeah. Uh, and then, actually, my daughter, Chloe, was born not uh, last April, and then we opened the brewery, this brewery in the same year. So we kind of do it all at once. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I opened Kitchen Door when I was pregnant with my son, James, who's mm -hmm. 11. And my daughter, who is now eight, she was in the baby bucket when we were building out the second space that we just left and now moved to Dartmouth. So, yeah, it's a busy time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is keeping me going for now. I mean, we're, every year the restaurant's busier and busier. Lundberg's, um, you know, definitely a, a yeah. hot spot and it continues to grow. Well, you've also done some really great things there. Like, you've made a yeah. lot of transitions. Yeah. Adam and I know each other from Taste in Nova Scotia. So, I mean... Yeah. All things local is really your is, uh, is is all of our mantras, but certainly you've reflected that well in the menu and also obviously on the tap. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, and every product we carry in the brewery here too is local. A lot of little yeah. retail items and awesome. Between that and opening the larger brewery out there, yeah, and keeping this keeping yourself busy. And, yeah, that's, that's gonna be enough for me for a little while. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> for a little while until the wife says no more, exactly. no more. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't see other properties in town. What they could be, but I'll hold off that. Right now. You got to partner with other people that want mm. those, right? Just help yeah. facilitate. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. I have to say, delicious. Thank, thank you very much. Very well done. Very well done. And thanks for having us. We always like coming on the road. And uh, maybe next time we're going to go back. Uh, we said to uh, Ironworks when they get their second still, which is supposed to arrive soon, mm -hmm. which they haven't named yet, which Adam would kept throwing out names. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They yeah. Because they call the new one Liesel. Yeah. You can names. We're always looking for something. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're up and running in the new space, maybe we'll uh, pop on back down and do a, a on the road again down in Lunenburg. Yeah. Awesome. Love Thanks. Back. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's it. Chit chat shop. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he edits this all out. <laughs> 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 I hope I wasn't expecting to see it. Yes. Cheers. cheers. cheers.